love this time in Expresso mm. here on S3. I love when I can do this. So welcome back to another installment of the Culinary Hotline Blink! Ting, ting, ting! Ting Yes, just ting all day. That's the whole vibe. Chef Clem is here to help you. If you have any questions for Chef Clem on all things in the kitchen, call us right now, 21 110 zero. Triple five two, and I want to start you off off the bat. I've got actually something that I found on Facebook. I want to read it out to you. It is from a promise to Tole. Mm. She'd like to know, Chef Clem, how to make an open pie, struggling Zanibo. So please assist. And then I tried to call her. She didn't answer the phone. It's so fine. It's fine. I'm gonna just just connect with you mentally yes. in terms of an That's open pie, bath. an open pie, and I was yeah. like. It's basically pastry at the bottom then with your filling and then what it's, would be pastry at the top is gone, right? So it's like tart, quiche vibes. Okay, Tarty cool. vibes, tarty right. vibes. Tarts. Okay, so here's the thing. Tarts are absolutely amazing because oh. it's, it's easier to make than the full on pie with the short crust and the puff. I think it's because the, the lid is the one where you, it's kind of, it's vulnerable to steaming out and becoming a bit soft and you know, there's a lot or of things shrinking. that can happen. Yep. Hey. So I love this concept because I do feel like this is a lot easier. And I also enjoy seeing the contents of said pie because you get to see what you're about to consume. That's As opposed to saying thing. like, is this actually a venison? Is it a pepper steak? Is it a steak and kidney? But this one, you see it right there. It's like you a window to culinary delight. Right there. So poetic. And That's it is. It. Thank you. Yes. I like okay. So I'm using phyllo pastry, phyllo or phyllo, whatever you want to call it. It's delicious, that's it the is. thing. So it's, it's so easy to work with. The most important thing is when you buy it, you're gonna buy it, it's gonna be frozen, okay? Yeah. Do not put it in the microwave. I've heard this. Don't mm -hmm. put it in the microwave. You're actually gonna cook it. It's gonna be cooked when you take it out the microwave. Yeah. So pop it in the side. The thing about filipatia is extremely, extremely <laughs> thin. So and it's, being, isn't it sensitive to temperature? So where you, where you do thaw it out, should you be careful about the temperature too? Because you know you don't want it to go over because I'm assuming phyllo is just one of those pastries where, I mean, it's so sensitive, it sticks together. Sticks together. Yep. And what you want to do so it doesn't dry out. All right. Yeah, so exactly like you said, when you do thaw it out, don't keep it in direct sunlight. Thought doesn't so. need that, doesn't yep. need that. Get a clean, clean, clean. Got to be clean, clean. Clean, clean. Preferably one with a label on it. That's how clean it should be, right? Hey, that you like washed it through, etc. Okay, done. Done. Great. Okay, cool. This is <laughs> going to just, I've made it damp. All right. Okay? Then run it, I feel that. It's not wet, it's just damp, yeah, okay? Just enough, So Great. all you're gonna do is just lay, layer that over your pastry, that's gonna keep it nice and moist and it won't dry out. So, first yeah, thing is, filo pastry, the more you layer them up, the more texture you're gonna get. Right. But again, you don't wanna dry it out. So every time you add a layer, you add butter, okay? Ooh, butter is the culinary lubricant of delight. That's, that's what, what it, it says. Is. That's, the, that's the it says on the label. In the dictionary as well, as well just, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> so. Another thing that's amazing is the more rough edges you create, the more texture, because that's going to cook, it's going to start separating slightly, it's going to go nice and crispy. I also so like the look of it. As the well. look, the yeah, look is the, absolutely the, the important. The look is great when it comes to phyllo, so... Oh, man. This is okay. going to be good. What are we going to fill it with? Sorry, I, I don't want to jump the gun, but I feel like I want to I know what the filling's going to be. We're going to go nice and vegetarian with this one. All right. Or, or meat-free. Yes. So we're going to go some beautiful to vine, vine tomatoes. Oh, and then we're going to go those, man. some mozzarella. Some olives. I'm gonna make a quick royale. Actually, I'm gonna ask you to make that quick royale for me. All right, got you. Right. So here's your bowl. <sighs> there we go. Eggs and a little bit of cream. If you can just combine those for me. Combine the eggs and the cream, sir. Combine the eggs got and you. the cream. Got you covered. And then salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Beautiful. Something which turned on the heat on this guy over here. But essentially, whatever the filling's gonna be is gonna like it's up to you. Absolutely up to you. Cool. And now we're going to combine. I wonder yes. how I'm going to whisk that through. Hmm. That'd be nice. Oh, whisk. Thanks so much. How's that? that? That's, that's great. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, I see a lot of people when they serve vine tomatoes, they actually bake it in a batter or they bake it in a sauce, whatever. Yes. They keep the vines on. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of tomato flavor in the actual vines. So you, 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 ah, you're retaining flavor. I got you. However. I make that mistake as well, eh? That's, yeah. I should keep it on. No, no, not really. Why? The thing is, <laughs> I've seen, especially in this tart, right? To be fancy, they'll just plonk the whole vine down there and then yes. pour the, the, the royale over and then pop it in the oven. It looks really fancy, but then you yeah. gotta eat it. So no, just take it off the vine. Just, just take it off the vine. Compost. Done. Yeah, we, that's it. Compost over, over okay, there. Okay, so I think with prawns you get deveined, with tomatoes devined, and, and it will then, be 
Yes, but I was going to say Good. that. It, say will, it, it will be. It will be divine. divine. Okay, yes. Carl, back to you. Mozzarella, we're going to go with some bocconcini, which Bocconcini. is the baby mozzarella. If I can ask you just to tear a few of those in, and you can totally half the tomatoes as well. I'm going to keep them whole because as it cooks, yeah. right, those juices inside there, it's going to like start to soften, start to warm through, and your bite it's going to just like burst in your mouth. Beautiful. You don't have to eat this when it's super hot, you can actually come to room temperature. Promi, I hope you're watching because this is all for you. Uh, Chef Pim tried to call you, but it's okay. We know that you're watching, which is great, and I hope and this is going to help. You Honestly, blue ticked me. <laughs> Saw my messages. No, it's fine. It's okay. You didn't do that. All right. I've got olives and I've got the stone soil in the olives. But I prefer buying olives that still have the stone in them. Yeah. I feel like the flavors are so much better. When the, when the, when the stone's not in them, it tastes a little more bitter, right? You know, I, I completely agree with that sentiment because I almost feel like the, the stone is helping. So the, the brine that you'll have the olives in, that's going to coat it beautifully. And right, Maybe right. it'll permeate a little bit. But that yeah. stone is actually that part of the plant that you want. You still want that olive flavor. You don't want to just get that salt brine flavor. And no, I'm saying that there, there are some great flavors in olives. This is why the oils are made and, and all of those. So I just think that this is a great little hack is the, if you can keep that pup in. It's, keep it's the pup in. And then taking it out, it's not a mission. Just kind of pinch it and you'll see it just separates. That's Already this is looking beautiful. I don't know if you can see this over here. Look at that. Already the color, the variation. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, I could even serve it just like that, but I, we have to cook it. You'll have to cook it. Yeah. You can pour your ro royale over for me, your right. custard. Right, so and that goes royale sorted over oven. here. It's got a very good custard color, which is great. Nice, nice. We and want I'm that. going to pour that over nicely. So let's do that there. And I want to try and cover as many of these items as possible, just to make sure that everything fixes together, because the real essentially is going to be the bind of everything. Yes, also that's the the, it's, the, it's the pool where the flavors collect. Oh, so absolutely. Yes. So, Oven, boom, done. done, done. And again, you can make this ahead of time. Let it be room temperature, perfectly yes. fine. So make it ahead of time so you're not stressing when it comes to the weekend. Everybody's just chilling. Open pie? Open We're gonna pie. just say it's a tart. Quiche. Okay, so expressoshow.com, grab the elements of the recipe as well as the method and give it a shot. It is going to be absolutely beautiful. I got something else for you today. Oh, we do? Okay, yeah, cool. I do. Uh, we've got a Mrs. Naidu. We try to call Mrs. Naidu, but Mrs. Naidu is just watching because same with Promi, wants to watch us. Uh, so this is the thing. When making dumplings in a stew, how do you avoid the stew thickening? That's interesting. Okay, so dumplings do release starch. Yeah. Which is, it might affect your stew then and thicken it. Okay. The amazing thing about stews, and especially the one that we're doing, we did a little oxtail stew and I just turned it down the heat because it's a bit hot. Great. Oxtail releases a lot, a lot, a lot of like beefy flavor. Yes. Okay. So essentially you don't need to use beef stock. Okay. If you notice that, and there's also gelatinous material in the bones, if you notice it does become quite thick. It does. So simple. Just grab this at the back of your espresso kitchen. That's very decorative at thing. the same time. I honestly thought there was a, a vase. Carl, I don't know what this is. I, but also, I don't it know was, it, I, it I, I, needed, I needed a jug and then I turned around and I was like, a you'll de do. Decorative calabash. Okay, cool. So. Decorative, grab your <laughs> decorative calabash, fill it up with water <laughs> and just add it. It's okay. as simple as that. Don't add stock to it to thin it out. Do not do that. Just pop some extra water in there and let it reduce slowly. Okay? I'm not going to rush you, Chef. But okay. Once you've got the, the, the dumpling mix made and you add the water so it doesn't thicken up too much, that's when you're going to put the dumplings on top of that and then once they're done, lid on, right? Right, lid on. So use spoons or you can shape into bigger balls. Okay. Two spoons work nice. You get a nice size one because maybe they're going to puff up as soon as you put that lid on it and put the lid on. That's how they actually cook, the steam. Yes. Right. Steam on, you've added your water to it, it's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's just right, your dumplings are done. Get yourself a decorative calabash. <laughs> and that's how you do a culinary hotline on a Wednesday. That's how we do it. We do it nice and fast and quick. And if you missed out on anything, this is why Chef Tim and I stay up all night to make sure that all the ingredients and the method is available to you on expressoshow.com. If you need anything, we'll be back with another edition very, very soon on your Feel Good Breakfast Show.